So, uh, being around Kel and the whole Nickelodeon gang, have you ever met the TV producer and creator of all that, Dan Schneider? I have. I have. And what do you know about the allegations of his inappropriate behavior around the kids? The age ranges, the ones that I was familiar with, are ages 13 to 22. I threatened him with something else horrible. And at the time, even, you know, saying like, okay, that's weird. I will come after you. So speaking Absolutely. about the kids that went through that in the industry, have you met actress Amanda Bynes? She's one of I the have. child stars of the industry nice. team that really What's up, y'all? This is Master P. It's Naturi Naughton, a.k.a. Tasha from Power. Hey, Anthony Hamilton here. And I just want to let y'all know, go to nightanddaynetmarket.com. 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 And get yourself some product. They're a black-owned company. It has beautiful melanated products. T-shirts, shoes, bags. Hoodies, to shoes, to jewelry, and hair care products. And we're here with Taisha Hampton, a.k.a. Uh, Taisha, Taisha Mitchell. Mitchell. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? Doing good. How are you? Great, great. Welcome back to the show, Miss Hampton. Thank you. So for those of who... For, for, for those of y'all who don't know your story or seen our last interview with you, can you briefly tell the people your story and about uh, your time in the entertainment industry as well as your marriage to Nickelodeon's uh, Kel Mitchell, who is now remarried and is a youth pastor? That's correct. Um, so my name is Taisha Hampton Mitchell, and I was married to Kel in 1999, and we divorced in 2010, and we have two children together. And it just has been an insane, crazy life with him, this man. Um, I have experienced all sorts of systems uh, thanks to him and the fact that he's such a narcissist. And if you've ever been in a relationship with one or you have children with one, they try to make your life a living nightmare. Um, so... I'm working through that as Kel owes so much money and back child and spousal support because he refuses to pay. So now here I am just talking about life with him and so basically surviving Kel Mitchell. Hmm. So uh, when, was, when was the last time you spoke to Kel or, or have any? Uh, yeah. When was the last time you spoke to him? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, probably something in regards to... Oh, you know, the very last time was when he wanted to, um, he asked me if I wanted to settle. That's probably the very last time. Okay. Was this recent? Uh, I'm going to say probably in 20, 2020. Oh, she went out. Oh, what happened? Oh, oh, oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I was answering a text and it goes away when I do that. Yeah, oh, you black. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, right, about hey. 2020. Mm -hmm. 2020? About 2020, I think so. I think it was, like, near the coronavirus. I tried to... <laughs> oh, so he was basically trying to offer you a lump sum to settle. Yes, yes. He was trying to offer me a lump sum. Okay. You yes. turned it down. Absolutely. So have he started doing any type of payments or anything yet? Oh, or? no. He refuses. No, he just continues to pay attorneys. And so I just got rid of my attorney and I'm just going to fight it myself. And then I'm going to show other women and men also how to fight it themselves as well, because you can absolutely do it. Yourself and you don't have to go through all this craziness because at the end of the day, you you don't win. Nobody wins. So it's just, you know, you just hand your money over to people that don't look like you that are not going to support you that are going to make laws that are going to completely go against you so you definitely want to take control of your finances right now especially we are in a recession so it's that's true extremely important so what do your children have to say about this whole thing between you and kel and all the stories you bringing up from the past and posting on social media um, well, the kids know a lot of these stories already. Um, and they were the ones who told me, I actually waited until they were old enough to see, you know, 
to make sure that they were okay with me ever going public with any of this. And so I got both of their permission before I even talked about it. Okay. Yeah, they had, um, when when they were younger, Kel had went over on social media and he just did an entire, uh, when narcissists, before narcissists break up with you, they do what's called a smear campaign. So when Kel left the relationship, he went all over social media for years, for years, just bashing me while the kids were growing up. So much so that I had to get the kids an alias so that nobody would even know that was their dad. So, you know, I saw the kids and I saw, you know, how that affected them. So I'm like, you know, no, nope, I'm going to wait until they get older and find it. And number one, also see if Kel would actually follow through with anything. And then number two, give them the opportunity to let me know what I can share, what I couldn't share, because, you know, this is still their dad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, what? It, what's not in. People use their bodies to, you know, control and to gain power and to gain influence or they, they'll use something. Yeah. You know, you got like, you got to get, it's a give and take. You got to give up something to, to get to, to get, you, something. Mm -hmm. to get something. Nothing is free. So, and, and anything. Right. So basically so, that that casting couch is for real <laughs> oh yeah definitely it's a definitely if, definitely i don't know if you ever heard of the uh the actor Corey feldman yes uh, yeah always did movies with Corey heim the one that Corey actually, heim, yeah yeah he yep. yep. well yep. he 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 mentioned the uh the casting couch but he said a lot of pedophilia yep. went on him oh cat. definitely I, I i honestly feel like it, you know it's it's to me i feel like it was way worse with with palm colored people. Like, I just feel like it's way worse because I felt that, um, like Shirley Temple, I don't know if you need anything know about Shirley Temple. Uh -huh. and, yep. I mean, it, so there is some pretty crazy stuff. They was really, really doing some really crazy things. So, you know, I just feel like theirs is on a whole different other kind of level, like a whole nother level, completely and what's different. The, what, what the responsibility you think that, you know, accountability on the parents that pushed, you know, pushed this on their kids in the entertainment industry. You know, I, I feel so bad, but I honestly feel like maybe it's the other way around. Maybe maybe they know who to pick. You know, like maybe maybe they maybe they know who to pick. Because um, anytime I've ever gotten like kind of close to a role or anything like that, um, because my aunt was my manager and everybody knew this, you know, I was untouchable. So, but other people weren't untouchable and mm -hmm. so you know i could tell i could be like what the heck like they're staying longer for the you know and they're just things are weird and you know you feel energy weird and they're and they're like like according to this it's only supposed to be two callbacks but they're like call back like every single day for like five days and you're like what's happening and so you know i don't know what else to think besides that like because what else something do you think? Going on. Yeah, it's yeah, it has going to be. On. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Like yeah. nobody else is there, and people are doing all these different things, and that's just part of the industry. But yeah, it's part of it. I mean, I, I honestly don't know because that's the thing. When people become really, really famous, it's not like they really did anything, right? Sometimes they come out of absolutely nowhere, and it's like, how? How did how did they do that? And the industry is heavily run by who you know, so it like sets it up for it, you know. It's like yeah. a perfect storm for people to use their power to get what they want sexually from younger people that are willing to do that because these people come from nothing. So I feel like when, when you come from something and they know this and they know that you're going to tell, then they <laughs> you say your, um, your run in Hollywood is limited to whatever they want you to do, you know? Yeah. So that's just how it goes. Um, yeah. And, uh, uh, What's her name? China McLean. You know who she is, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she actually, you know, exposed some things about Satanism in Hollywood. Uh, uh, you know, Satanism being a big thing in Hollywood, devil worshiping. Um, what's your thoughts on that? The industry is heavily run by who you know. So it like sets it up for it, you know? It's like yeah. a perfect storm for people to use their power to get what they want sexually from younger people that are willing to do that because these people come from nothing so i feel like when when you come from something and they know this and they know that you're gonna tell then they you say your um your run in hollywood is limited to whatever they want you to do you know yeah. so that's just how it goes um, yeah. and uh uh what's her name 
China McLean, you know who she is, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she actually, you know, exposed some things about Satanism in Hollywood. Uh, you know, Satanism being a big thing in Hollywood, devil worshiping. Um, what's your thoughts on that? And have well, you ever you witnessed, uh, you know, Satanism in Hollywood? Well, the only person the well, okay, so no. Um, I have seen people do some very different things. I, there was a couple of people that I thought were um, the snake people. Um, anyway, um, so I have seen some pretty crazy things. Um, I do believe in God and I do believe in the devil. So um, I would have to say that it's just, it's just rampant in just our belief system. I just feel like it's just the people that created the dollar, you know, it's like they made really everybody slaves and, you know, people are doing really terrible, horrible things just to hold on to that. And that's kind of scary. That's a very scary that we've made it so that people are doing so terrible with their lives where they feel like they don't have a life that they have to just doing unimaginable things with people in order to have this amazing life that they never even get to enjoy because they're doing all these terrible things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like so, a catch-22. So uh, being around Kel and the whole Nickelodeon gang, have you ever met the TV producer and creator of all that, Dan Schneider? I have, I have. And what do you know about the allegations of his inappropriate behavior around the kids? The age ranges, the ones that I was familiar with, are ages 13 to 22. I threatened them with something else horrible. And at the time, even, you know, they like, okay, that's weird. I will come after you. It's time to talk about this monster, Dan Schneider. He is a former writer, producer, and director from Nickelodeon who did some disgusting things to children while he was there. But instead of investigating him like they should have, Nickelodeon gave him $7 million and said, thank you for your work. You can go away now. Yet those survivors have not forgotten what he has done to them. If you guys don't know who Dan Schneider is, no worries, but he is a former actor back in the 80s. He was in several movies and television shows until he became a writer and then he worked at Nickelodeon on a show called All That which a lot of people are familiar with and turned out to be a success. But after this show lost its popularity, he moved on to create The Amanda Show. And during this time, he worked very, very closely with Amanda Bynes. And obviously that's really problematic. He worked on a lot of different shows and several more with Nickelodeon. Um, I honestly, you know, he was just, a wee, he's just, he's just weird. Um, I don't, I never, saw anything like myself with my own eyes like with him and anybody else but it was kind of like known that just kind of unsaid like the elephant in the room um so i felt like he he like walked around it you know like kind of played around it so that it was never anything that was going to be over overt it was always covert um but when i did up to recently, I had seen a TikTok in regards to the FBI's um, words for pedophiles. And there were so many like words for like cheese was like girls and like pizza was like boys and or I don't I don't know. I, I could be mixing all this up, but hopefully no, no, I know what you're talking about. You know yeah, what I'm talking about? FBI I, You know, when you guys put it together, find it and please put it up for people. But yeah, there's there were so many parallels to the Nickelodeon show that I was like sick to my stomach because I could never understand all these associations with cheese and why do you have to step in it? And they had like obviously weird foot fetishes, like the camera angle mm -hmm. with little girl's feet. And it's just sick when you think about it. Really sick when you when you like when you're like putting all the you know the dots together, but then you also have to think about the other thing too because I don't think people know about um, they don't know about Mother Teresa, and um, they don't know how she was running basically child brothel rings through the the uh, church. So mm -hmm. um, we've got a serious problem with this that dates back. Uh, 
a very long time, I'm sure, as Thank soon you. as, you know, Christopher mm -hmm. Columbus came over here, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> that's when that started, probably. Um, yes. But yeah, we've got a whole history of this throughout this country, and those that are in power keep it going. And I feel like, you know, it, it, it just, it keeps people in control. You know, you take away a child's innocence at a young age and i feel that that child has two options one option is to think that they're the ones that were in the wrong which i feel like it's a lot of people's options so they hide and they just try to be better people which makes them you know basically perfect like minions right like their entire lives they feel like they have to you know um do things for people's love and that's a perfect person to control right then you have the other side of that child right and another child might get abused and be like f that f the world f everybody else i'm about mine i don't care what's going on and then those are the people that rise to power because they're constantly stepping on the smaller people and they're using them and they're you know and they're destroying them and after they do that they're so easy to control so it works for the system that we live in so speaking Absolutely. about the kids that went through that in the industry have you met actress amanda Bynes? She's one of I the child stars the industry seemed to really mess up. Amanda Laura Bynes is an American actress and was in so many successful Nickelodeon shows like The Amanda Show. All that and many more. Amanda met Dan when she was only 10 years old on the set of All That back at 1996. They had a really great working relationship and that led on her getting her own show The Amanda Show in 1999. She couldn't live like a normal kid. She was always forced to do things, got so many work, and she was always tired. He owns the place. And I'm thinking, he's, it was just, he looks so creepy. He looked so creepy. And I said something like that to that effect to um, Amanda. And I, and I said, oh. and then she said something like, I know all about fat and creepy. And she kept saying, I need a break, I need a break, I need a break, I need a break. And then she would say, you know, she must have said that 30 or 40 times, I need a break. And then she would say 30 or 40 times that she was tired or exhausted or, again, needed a break. Can't go on. And I know the one time that, that she had said something about her dad, and, and I don't know if that's true. But I think what she kind of meant, and I'm just guessing, is that her parents weren't around when she was getting dead. So in a sense, her parents were doing it. I follow you into the park. Yeah, you know, I, I, I have no idea what was going on with her, but obviously she, yeah, she, something happened. I don't know what happened. I don't know when it happened, but she was a different child when she was younger, or she could have been hiding it the entire time um, while she was younger. And then, but obviously she had a mental break. And I, I, like I said, anybody that comes out and says that something happens to them, I'm hundred percent with them. I believe them. There's, I, you know, they don't need proof. They don't need to show anybody anything because a lot of times there's not proof. These people don't leave proof, but you know, whatever they say, I feel like you got to believe that. Why wouldn't you? And you know, it's and why almost would like, they make, yeah, why would they yeah. just make it up? Yeah. And it's, and it's almost like you, you can't even like, if somebody tells you something and they're like, this happened to me and that, you know, in graphic and all this stuff, it's kind of like, who are you to, be, to, to not believe them ever in life? But we have this concept, this like belief in the United States that we have that right. We can tell people, you know, what to do and they do it. And they're just like, you know, little sheep walking around doing whatever the people tell you to do who have the gun or who have the money or who have the power. And, and we just follow along. We just follow. You know, I notice a lot of child stars end up as like drug addicts and worse. You know, in uh, Keenan Thompson personally, how how was he able to dodge all that? Because he seemed to always have his shit together, even to this day. Yeah, I feel like he, because he had a very strong role model, his mother, and mm -hmm. I felt like he really instilled with him like all these values and things. And he wasn't green. He was he was he he knew his his mom. He was already in the industry for a very very long time, mm -hmm. so or he had already seen things and heard things and his mother was like right next to his side a lot like uh kel's mom wasn't able to do that a lot of people's uh, mothers were not able to be there so they were basically there with different strangers that were adults and those people were entrusted with their care and you know if any of that stuff is happening what child is going to be like turning that down like now that like like they can retire their parents now their parents love them to death they're on like a tv show they're getting whatever they want to at any any time like like whatever like you want to go to magic mountain today let's go you want to funnel cake every single day you know they're like so everything's at your grasp but whatever you it's like the the best feeling in the world it's the best feeling in the world who who's gonna give that up or you know or who's gonna mess that up they're not gonna mess that up 
That's so it's true. sad. It's sad, but you that's, know. That's why you said they know how to pick them. They would they pick do. Someone. Yep. Mm -hmm. They do. They they don't. They're not gonna pick somebody who's whose dad is present, who's who's mm -hmm. watching them. They're not gonna pick those ones. They're not. They're just they're gonna stay away because it's too much trouble. It's you know. Like, oh no, not this one. That's not this. <laughs> not this one. That's why it's so important to teach uh, women and men. Just you need to know how to speak up for yourself because if you don't, people will use you, especially kids, especially if you send your children to school. You send your kids to school and that, that's, you know, pedophiles are always in places where there's lots of kids. That's their hunting ground. So, you know, they look at things like that, which is why it's so important for men to be in their children's lives because you got you're an you're an additional protector you know for especially young girls and pedophiles stay away from that because oh no i'm not gonna you know have this dad kill me right exactly uh jr you wanted to ask her about what do you want to ask her about oh yeah yeah um something, the, the movie gank what was the atmosphere like working with uh cat williams and all all those people that you uh you know, start with in game. Yes, yes. So um, it was. He was so great. Uh, Cat Williams was really awesome. Uh, he's so hilarious. Like he was just so funny. And a lot of the times, I couldn't even hold myself. I would just start laughing because um, mm -hmm. he, he, like, he just made up his own lines. But it, I just went with it, um, and um, everybody just kind of went with it. And it was just awesome. He was. He was great. He was really, really, really great. And uh, one thing about Cat Williams is that he had adopted adopted a lot of kids i think he had like seven or nine kids that he had adopted and mm -hmm. so he was like really, really giving them like such great lives and um i've just been so proud of him i think when once again it's like it's just kind of sad like you know there's just certain people that are just like i'm just not going to do this and they can only get to like a certain point but i feel like you can overshadow that now though because i feel like you know you can kind of overshadow that but sometimes they owe a lot of people by the time they get up to the top too. Like they owe a lot of people favors, you know? So then they're like, you just, you can't even stop doing what you're doing because it's like, you gotta pay, you know? Yeah, Cat Williams, Williams, Cat Williams definitely was started exposing the industry with the Bottles Mansion parties. Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood, you never expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party. And then it's a separate party in the little rooms. You be looking at all the goddamn rooms and you around and look in the raw room and shit. Nick, come here, come here. Is that two niggas kissing? Is one of them niggas Professor Obi? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he, yeah. so that's when his, you know, his career started to tumble down as far as like industry wise, like far as getting roles. Yeah, like, he, he was. Roles Cat, Cat, yeah, yep. Yeah, Cat Williams, yeah. He started coming out with it and he started just talking his truth and his reality. Yeah. Um, and you know, it was funny, but it wasn't funny at the same time. And you know, they just made him look crazy and he was, you know, doing some drugs and things. And the misconception is that there are drugs that can help you do your job. No, there isn't. There aren't job drugs that help you memorize, to be creative, to come up with something that somebody didn't already say, to figure out the funny thing in something tragic. Those are not the side effects of drugs. Those are the side effects of brilliance. And so if you think that there's some state you can be in that will deliver you a higher frame of comedy, there there isn't it's the closest connection with the people i'm only the greatest comedian living because i have more female fans than any comedian on the globe period that's the end of the discussion that 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 your cat so the girls the girls love you sir i don't cat, love anything love but the them firm. there is nothing on this planet other ma'am sir a perm is a homage to them anyway they know what that is See, they, they let me in the business thinking that maybe ah! I was soft out there, you understand? But it was a misconception. So even as the pimp comedian, you have to understand the brilliance in the fact that he's told no pimp jokes. That he has no jokes about slapping mm. the bitch. That conversation never takes place. Do you understand? So they downplay me because they must. Because the guy that you're saying is crazy and maybe a crackhead has outworked you every second that he has been a peer of yours. You probably have one comedy special. He probably has 10. The greats you talk about probably have two and he has 10. This is 16 100 city <laughs> tours. It's, it's 
This is a billion so streams. You, you mean, you see? So ah! what I'm saying is, if you don't understand that you are powerless other than the power that God gives you, then you're going to be stuck out here pretending and playing and attempting to be things that you don't need to be. We are in a, a blessed craft, this one of comedy, but it is part and parcel with the people it is delivered to. They made him look like, you know, he was really not right in the head. And that made, you know, him lose his credibility. Mm -hmm. it, it's funny it, like, how you said it's, it's funny, but not funny at the same time. Sort of like Nick Cannon in that goddamn dress in that uh, cheerleading outfit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's, it, it yeah. really was. It, it was it was the truth though you know what i'm saying i mean it was, it was cat, cat is... williams man Whew. he yeah, said a lot he said yeah. a lot he cat williams has really been he has been on one he has been like about it he is like i'm sorry i'm plugging in my um my phone cords i don't want the phone to die um and he's he said a lot about it and i'm you know people have been listening to it but you know it's just like because once again, the media is control of it. And I don't know if you've seen recently, there's a couple of people who, you know, have, I guess they believe Nick and, or it, it's not even a matter about belief, right? Because nobody really cares whether or not this happened, right? It's just who they're going to support, right? There's certain people that are going to support certain people because they don't care if this happened or not. Nobody really, you know, it's really not that important in life, like, of, you know, of, like of things to think about. Yeah. But um, <laughs> for us, and our community, this is always what's pushed, right? This narrative is always pushed. So it's this is the story that gets out, right? Like, um, I don't know if you heard about the senator, you know. Um, nobody would even know about the senator if she didn't go upside on, down on her head and shake, her, yeah. and shake her butt, you know, with a G-string on. Nobody would even know who she was if she didn't do that. And That's so true. it's like, you know, it's, it's not the other way around. It's not that people that look like us are out doing crazy stuff. It's that... They don't push anything but the crazy stuff. Yeah. Oh, we so know it's, firsthand. Yeah. We, know. we talk about oh, yeah. that all the time on this on this show. Absolutely. When pe people are asking me, they're like, well, why are you coming out with this now? I'm like, I've, I've been coming out with this, but you just didn't know. You didn't know because I'm, I'm just talking about, I'm talking about it regularly. And it wasn't anything that was, you know, a narrative that you want to push. But as soon as I talk about, you know, two successful comedians possibly having some sort of you know gay tryst or something because i said he was in a you know and they were on the bed and they were in the bedroom even though i didn't say anything i didn't even take it there but i can see you know just because of what kind of environment we live in how people took yeah. it there and it just went so quick um that you know i had no choice but to do what if i would have taken it off then they would be like oh she was lying so i had to keep it you know because it actually really did happen um but it's like it went so so quickly so you know people are like well you didn't well you came out of nowhere it's like no i've been here but that's not what they this is not the narrative they don't you know me being a mom going through all these systems based you know all these different systems failing the person with the kids who needs it that story doesn't that doesn't go anywhere that gets nowhere yeah. they <laughs> can they can it definitely didn't deny it though they definitely didn't deny it that it didn't happen no, I mean, and, I, and I, I, I don't even care if he, I don't even care if he never says he did it. I really just want the outfit back, like, or the money for it, like, dude, like. They can it definitely didn't deny it though. He no, made, I mean, like, and, I, and I, I don't even care if he, I don't even care if he never says he did it. I really just want the outfit back, like, or the money for it, like, dude, like, you have it now, like. I'm just. This Man, is my year. Nick can't give her an outfit back. She want a crazy. She want a cheerleading outfit back. That, you know and what I, mean? I, I, I wouldn't even talk about the story anymore. I don't even care, like, dude, like. It doesn't this literally does not this was like a blimp in in my you know in my life like yeah, i don't even care that much about it you might not want it back because that might be what he was wearing when he gave uh orlando that sloppy toppy damn well, <laughs> he said he did you it as a what? girl he could have been wearing that guy in cheerleading outfit so it'd be like a monica Lewinsky dress you know what? <laughs> you, you, know, listen, you might not you, want you know that what? You, you have just ruined that for me you have just ruined <laughs> that one for me now I, I i don't i don't think i want it back you're absolutely right but you know what i can use maybe about 10 10 g's for it because that's with interest you know what i'm saying like i know nikki got hey. it cash that cash up that um because yeah i've been i've been 
I had to like make my daughter's cheerleading costume something different because Nick had the costume. He's like, she's like, oh, I want to be the cheerleader. You know, it's just this has been an issue. So, dang, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want that back neither. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I just thought about that, <laughs> yeah. and I'm okay, and I'm okay, and I really didn't even need the visual. I had, I you know, I really did not need the visual of that at all. Um, but yeah, no, but, but Nick's response was like, that made me, that made me go, what is happening? Because I thought Nick was going to say something like, yeah, and I was doing it for an all that sketch. That's all that, that's what I thought he was going to say. Like, that's where I thought he was going to go with this. But then he went with complete opposite left field, far away from anything I would have even pictured in my brain. And, um, that, exactly. like, that threw me off. Now that made me second guess. Now that made me second guess myself. Right. Like put put a Nickelodeon uh props up his ass and like why would you ever say that? Why, why would you why would you say that? And you know you know people are putting like you know like instead of saying corn they're putting corn like so like yeah. all of these sexual innuendos in your joke and I really did not mean it to be sexual. It was not a diss. People are like don't don't bring um nick in it i'm like dang like i literally was not sexual in my brain at all i just thought you know it was kind of street strange and weird but to me it wasn't out of the norm of what they do on the show so it yeah. wasn't like une that unexpected to me like i said like now bill cosby or something you know i'd be like what the heck but kel you know oh, the bill was cosby and the pudding pops Right, if he was in a cheerleading outfit, I'd be like, wait, hold on, or, or you know, the president or something, I'd be like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> but the fact that it was people that do this, you know, so I was like, maybe that's what I thought. Was... Right, that's what like, I thought. I never, never didn't even didn't even come to my brain like that. And I explained that in my story time video, like I just, I just thought it was two guys doing weird things that guys do, you know, like pee on nah, trees. Guys and don't do that. Nah, guys don't wear cheerleading outfits and try to cheer each other up. But a sketch right, comedian but maybe, might. But maybe guys do. But, but maybe guys. But maybe guys do that. That do that on TV and think it's funny. Like I. No, to me, it's not. It's not funny to me. But maybe that's how they think it's like hilarious to themselves. I don't know. That's what I thought. Like. I mean, I thought that's what sketch comedians do. You know, maybe they was practicing. You know, some for some shit they was gonna do on the set. That's, that's what. what I that's what the first thing that's, that came to my mind when I heard me that. Me too. Story. That's what I thought he was gonna say. That's why I was like, dang, why didn't he just say that? I don't understand because that's that's really what I thought. That's where I thought this story was going. But when he mentioned it on Power One Hundred Six and he said I used to cross dress, I'm like, wow, that's like crazy. That's insane. I didn't expect no, no. that one. And and, 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 the, and the reason why my and the reason why my mind went to that is because I used to watch all that in Nickelodeon a lot. Yeah, so you see it. So, so it was like it was like yeah. But then now, I'm seeing it now as an adult, and I'm looking right. at some of them sketches, and I'm like, it's something sketchy about this sketch. Is like yeah. you said with the cheese, Vincent and the cheese, Jeez, and then yeah. some of the jokes that Book they fetishes. did was like sexy yes. windows, and there's so like, many. Uh, Listening to like, it as an adult is so weird and disgusting. Like yeah, I, I can't even watch it. I can't even yeah. watch it because it's so weird to me and it's wow and i refuse i literally refuse to allow um nickelodeon to play inside the house because i was like hearing messages in it like the commercial the commercials would be on and i would hear like them be like tricks or something or like there were like words because um ever since i've been little i've been able to like decode like i, I, mm -hmm. so I speak like computer language but like i can de decode things and i pick up on patterns so quickly and i'd be like oh my gosh they're, they're saying twix to like um, millions of times throughout the entire show mm -hmm. and then they show you like a tricks commercial and it's like as soon as i go to the store i'm like and then that you know you notice that they put those sugary you know cereals right in the front i love yep. it Yep. And then it, then you go and you get it. And I just remember putting all that together. And I was like, I'm never watching Nickelodeon. It's like, oh my gosh, they made me go pick up something that I don't even like. And mm -hmm. I didn't even know about. Um, and then there's, you know, and you know why they do all that. So it's just like, uh, yeah, they, it's, it's very subliminal. You know, the children's time spans just for thinking. So even when my kids were younger, I didn't even want them to watch that. I would only have my kids watch movies so that it expands their time frame. 
you know, they, <laughs> and they have better logical concepts than every three minutes at a commercial. So I didn't even allow my kids to watch television besides movies. Absolutely. Good. Yeah, because of all the subliminal programming that takes mm -hmm. place. Oh, I mean, yeah. we just did a uh, we just did an article about Ti posting something on his IG that he immediately took down about the MK Ultra project. I don't know if you ever heard of that. The MK Ultra supposed to be something about satanic ritual abuse and and actually taking over the person's mind. Here that would test a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Illness in the family. Mm -hmm. A breakup, this spasm of publicity about what happened in, from Mexico to London. It was pretty rough, yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Ah, oh, weird. Hello. Um, oh my goodness, hello. Ew, strong Brittany. Um. Yeah, it was a weird. Ew, I'm in the first. Can we? Yeah. Project where they create yes. Manchurian candidates and mind yep. control slaves, and so yeah. have you? Have you witnessed any of this? Like any type of erratic behavior from anyone that be like, huh? That person might have been under mind control because it's like the split um, personalities, the alters. Yeah, I, you know what, I, I just, I don't know, you know, a lot, unfortunately, because I think a lot of kids are, okay, so one thing that I think people don't know is that children are the best liars, like, they are hands down the best liars, you, a, a child can look you right, in, they don't, you can't tell if a child is telling the truth or not, they're the best liars, but I think the reason why they're the best liars is because somebody has already, you know, they've been abused, because some kids don't know how to lie at all, they just tell the truth, but the ones that are really good, you will never know. And I think that's because, you know, that more than likely they have been abused. So they, I feel like they just get them at a perfect age that they that they turn them. So they're like, they're just all the way, they don't care. You know, like they already kind of know what they're supposed to do at a very young age and they just continue it into adulthood. And then those same people reoffend, you know, and I just feel like that's how it goes. And then those people have so much more money than everybody else. So let me ask you a question. Uh, this is along the lines of the whole mind control thing. So when you said you was doing the auditions and all this type of stuff, you said certain kids, they would say, oh, you got an extra call in or call in five times a, a week. Or and he was like, I thought it was just two callbacks. Or but you think that could have been the time that they was probably doing prepping them for the whole mind control thing? That's no. why, especially the ones who were unprotected, like you said from there. Right. I just, I just think that they, they, it already, like, it already happened. Like, okay. So like, think about this. So it happens on your first audition, right? So you go to an audition, right? And then somebody has to like you enough for you to come back. Yes. So, so that's the first thing, right? They're conditioning you to do whatever it is, is to make them like you and you feel bad. You cry. Like I remember crying sometimes because I didn't get a part. And like, oh my gosh, well, what could I do better? So then you, you go to the next audition, like, oh my gosh, if I do this one better, then I'll get it. Even though it has nothing to do with how you do. Like your audition has nothing to do. Just that has nothing to do with your acting, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, so, but, but you think this, right? Cause I, I'm older now, so I know. But when I was younger, I didn't understand it. And I used to think like, I, I'll study harder, I'll be better, I'll look cuter, I'll be sl slimmer, I'll talk differently, you know what I mean? Like. I mean, I was going to tanning salons, like I was taught, I was just trying to do everything possible. So that's the conditioning. The conditioning is we're going to have a thousand people and you got to show us why you're better than all of them. Hey, <laughs> you know, that's how, that's how they got, that's, how, to that's do. how it goes. Yeah. That's, that's how so, they so, get people to do whatever. That's they how, that's how, do. yeah. Forever, forever. You're constantly like. The producers have to like you. The, all these people have to like you. They have to want to work with you. And then you have to look good. And then so they're making all of these like un, just like the, the worst possible conditions for you to like make it. Like I remember when I'd be auditioning for stuff and if I was between like 105 to 112, I was OK as far as weight, weight wise. Anything over that, I was chubby, like chubby. And I'm 5'4", so like 
nothing about me was chubby. Nothing about me was chubby at 112, like 113, like nothing about me was chubby. But that's how the industry was mentally. I thought that, you know, I get past 113 and I don't get certain kinds of roles. I already was limited on the kinds of roles just because of my skin color. I, I speak Spanish, so I could do other roles and I could do them in Spanish. And so I, I or I could play, you know, um, biracial. And so that gave me some, but you know, it's like you have certain kinds of roles. So, so that's like, so what you just explained was like the surface level mind control. Controlling yeah. people through like those types of, you know, you yeah. got to be this size, you got to look yeah. like this, you yeah. got to be, it's not really about skill or talent, it's about really about Nothing. grooming you for something else. Exactly. So this about, is, yeah. So this is what I wanted to mention because, see, that's surface level, but it, I feel like it goes deeper based on what a lot of uh, celebrity said. For instance, like Raven Simone, she said she don't remember anything from the Cosby show. Like she don't remember being on set. She don't remember doing any of that. I can only tell you how the journey to the Cosby show happened through folklore that my parents told me how to answer that question when I was younger. Um, honestly, I don't remember. I don't remember working with, I don't remember a scene. I don't remember anything while it's a rehearsal or a camera. I remember the smell of the soul food coming out of his dressing room. I remember this, okay, so when we opened the show uh, in front of a live studio audience, you had to walk up these stairs and we came down that classic staircase. I remember standing up there and playing with the wood before I went down. I do not remember as soon as the camera starts. Something clicks off and I do what I'm trained to do. Yeah, when I turned 18, I knew something was going on, so I started going to therapy, and it's dissociation. I just black out. I turn into who I'm supposed to be when the camera's on, um, and then I come back to when normal life resumes. I mean, I know she was really young, but it was a mm -hmm. time like she don't remember doing any. It was like, it's almost like how they switch. Just, yeah, like they switch them on and off. Like they have like a a switch button that they do where they pull different personalities and alters out of the person because i don't know how much you know about the nk ultra program but they actually do things to shatter the person's subconscious mind so they can oh, pull man. different so they can pull different yeah, alters I, and different personalities out of the person yeah i mean i i've heard i've heard of it i definitely have heard of it but i just wonder like why why would they have to because you know if, if you're in that industry and you're to that point or you're to that level it's like why would you have to why, why why would why would they need to do that extra because this is something that they already want so it's like i don't know why they would need to do that because it's already what they want and they already know what they have to do to get it so it's like i mean that's that that would be like i don't know i don't know like like why would why would they need to do that too like that would be insane. well well they well the thing is they say they have them doing things other than just acting like they have them doing way different dark op type of things like oh but but they would probably do that anyway without even that mind control because they're already to that point and nobody wants to lose that like once you get to the point of like celebrity status it for a lot of people for a lot of people they cannot handle not being famous for a that that's how the industry is run so if you know like that if you don't do what these producers are telling you to do, then you're not going to be famous. Then they don't care. They, they wouldn't need to also do anything extra because it's like, that's what they want. And they know that if they do this with this producer, or this producer says, I need you to do these five projects and then I'll put you on this project. Then they're going to do it, even if they don't want to do it, because they know that they have to do whatever these producers are telling them to do to get to the next level. So basically, so like, even if they told them you got to manage a human trafficking ring, they do that just to keep their career. Absolutely, absolutely, in a heartbeat. They would need to get mind control for that. It's like, oh, that's all I gotta do? Like, okay, you know. Or, I mean, or slip this powdery substance in this person's drink when they, and the yeah. next thing you know, you hear about them dying of an overdose. Right, yeah, that's, that's what I'm common. saying. Like, yeah, that's common. Yeah, I mean, like, you, right? you, you're, you're picking kids who more than likely were abused, who are coming out of trailer parks in the middle of Montana, you know, you know, in the middle of nowhere, who probably had no chance at, like, survival you know survival of life probably you know like they're gonna be already messed up 
and you give them all this money and they believe they have all this power and they believe that they have all this freedom even though they don't by the time they realize it that they don't then the industry is done with them mm -hmm. and you know it's like well what do you do so you got to decide you keep doing what they want you to do yeah because you still want all these things if you if you don't care about those things that's when you get you know looking crazy and that's when you're overdosing and that's when you're just like you know you're, wow you're just, this, you know. this is you that's a very interesting perspective that you put on this because you basically saying they don't even need to do any deep mind control for them to do these wicked things that they yeah, do they do it just to keep their status and their career going so Absolutely. basically there's no excuse there's no excuse like the accountability no. should be there even more because it's like all right you wasn't under mind control you just wanted to keep your celebrity status and you wanted that yeah. money to keep flowing in absolutely exactly. so you yeah, did a yeah. b c and d yeah that's yeah, yeah. but that's wow. but that's what i'm saying i feel like that that's why they purposefully pick kids who come from nothing and who have seen the worst possible situations because mm -hmm. because they never want to go back to that in life like mm -hmm. in that's life like, like there was a time i had to be in a domestic violence shelter with my kids and it's like i never want to go back to that in life had had i had you know had i I had never experienced any, anything like that. So like, it, once you experience that one time, you're like, almost like, whatever I have to do to, to make sure that that never mm. happens again mm -hmm. in life, you know? And if, and if you're a child experiencing that, imagine a child experiencing that, like a child experiencing that, that's even larger. Like, I remember, I don't know, like I, I was gonna be late for school and I thought literally I was gonna like die or something. Like I was gonna have a heart attack and die if I was like one minute late. So when you're younger, all those experiences are much bigger and they're much larger. So if you could imagine, you know, that per that same child becomes an adult, they're never going to want that to go away. And you know, especially and especially the perspective that you came with, a lot of these kids, they, they, they come from broken homes and poverty. So they're actually, a child is making the money to basically bring their family out of poverty. So Absolutely. even if they were getting touched on the set, they wouldn't let their parents know because like, I want them to keep being happy and being proud of me. Exactly. That's more important. That's more important than exposing the fact that they've been getting touched. I think there's not like one person in life that is not going to go through anything. Either you go through it when you're young or you go through it when you're older or you go through it your whole life. Like you're just going through it your whole life but nobody's going to be untouched one way or another you're going to go through something so terrible that it's going to make you decide like where what what which way do you want to go and at that point you have to make that decision when life gets you down like you have to really truly truly decide like what you want to do and i feel like like for me like this is like this is my time because it's like you know i'm just done I, i'm done with trying to be nice and play the nice game like i'm done with because it doesn't work a person will continue to bully you. A person is going to continue to shame you. A person's going until you start top speaking out. That's with anything. Like, you know, domestic violence goes on until people say this person is hitting me and they report it. Then it stops. Same thing with anybody who's being, you know, sexually abused. It, it's going to keep going on until you say something. And so, it it doesn't do anything, anybody, any good to be quiet about it because it'll it'll just keep going. And I think this is awesome. And I think that's why they want to shut down all the different avenues and, and they don't want people to talk because now they're unable to control all these viewpoints. They're unable to, to control people's decisions now and their thoughts because, you know, like I remember watching the news and I just felt like there was like one news station, like, wait a second, mm -hmm. they were <laughs> reporting the same every single news. Like, how is this news? If every single channel is on the same thing especially like like all the all of them will be like the benefits of coffee yep. and then the next Scripted. week the benefits of wine yep. like yep. wait what the benefits and, of water and like and, and, and the thing is it don't even just be the main the big it'd it be even the local news yes every single everything. every news yep every news everything yep. is the same so now yep. with all these people able to have all these different ideas and all these different you know thoughts and people are putting things together and finding information that was hidden you know, it makes it difficult to control. Like, I don't even watch news. I don't even pay attention. <laughs> I swear, mm -hmm. my, like, most of my news is like TikTok. Like, I, I don't even, all because propaganda. it's, yes, propaganda. What they say, the new normal. We all in this together. They all yeah. were saying that. New normal. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, they all was in, everybody. It, it was even written into the scripts of TV series and shows. 
This wow. is normal. Yeah. We all into this. We all in this together. I was actually watching yeah. an old show that came out in 2000. I think I believe 2014. It was called Manifest. It was, it's a Netflix show, and this this the episode that came out where they were actually saying the everything that they were saying the new normal the the that we all in this together they were saying that in 2017 even before the pandemic even took place throughout wow. throughout this, it, it actually they actually did it at least three or four episodes out of it was i think it was like the third season wow but they see, were they were using these terms even before the pandemic happened well well then yeah. but then but then think about it like this see this is the other thing how about they used it already enough so that now it's so normal to be used so it was yeah. mind control. It's the new normal. Yep, that's the yep, and that's what you know yeah, I mean? like, 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 the, like, basically, they're putting all these thoughts and things into your head. So then, late mm -hmm. years later, you're like, oh my gosh, I remember this happening. Well, mm -hmm. are, is that what happened, or did they put all these same thoughts into mm -hmm. your head that you believe now that this is going to happen because they've already told you it was because they've conditioned you to believe that already by constantly putting it here and putting it there and putting it here. And then now you're like realizing it, but are you really realizing it? Or did you just, you know, have you been conditioned for it already? You just, you weren't paying attention to it. Yep. It's crazy. Everything is conditioned. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy because T.I. literally posted that up on his Instagram. And Jr. how many minutes before they took it? Before he, he, took, he it took it down the next second because. He took it down the next yeah, second. Yeah, I'm saying like. He, yeah. He posted it. It was up there. It, got, it had got like. 100 or some comments comments on it right away and then he deleted the post ti posted something very disturbing on his instagram page the other day and deleted it immediately i'm not 100 percent sure the reason behind this post but it was about something really talked about by mainstream celebrities this is something you would hear only whispered throughout conspiracy theory circles and disgruntled b-list celebrities and blackballed a-list celebrities like roseanne Barr. Yeah, that's why T.I. deleted that damn post. <laughs> so in case you're wondering what T.I. Mysterious post was about, it was about uh -huh. Mind Control, a.k.a. the MK Ultra Project. I'm sure it is. <laughs> so T.I.'s post broke down what the MK Ultra program is. The meme-style uh, post states, MK Ultra is a sadistic CIA project that involves ritual abuse. Victims are drugged hypnotized, traumatized, etc. To rewire their brain, these mind control zombies have been used as spies, assassins, sex slaves, and even celebrities. Through Project MK Ultra, CIA handlers have created Manchurian candidates willing to act in command even against their own conscience. Let's give them some clips of uh Yeah, let's give some them some examples. Yeah. So let's start off with Al Roker. I don't know if y'all remember this clip, but this is Al Roker getting hypnotized by one trigger word. It's glitching out. Right into That's exactly how you have did. to have a certain amount of distance between yes, the bodies exactly. and, and you're high. Yes, like they say in Catholic school, leave room for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> anyway, there is a lot of uh, memories today, actually. It's a big day in music history. 35 years ago today, Elvis Presley passed away, the king of rock and roll. And as Mark Cohn okay. says in his great song, Walking in Memphis, there's a pretty little thing waiting for the king down in the jungle. The trigger word was Holy Ghost. Catholic school and Holy Ghost, yeah. As soon as he said Holy Ghost, he went straight into yeah. He didn't blink, he didn't move. No, nope. he was stuck frozen. Leave room for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> anyway, there is a lot. Let me share that real quick. Let me zoom in on this on TI caption. So under the caption, this is what TI, you see, that's his Instagram page. See, Trouble Man 31. See that? So T.I. under the caption of the MK Ultra meme wrote this message from TV news media to social media. Be careful what you consume. You're being programmed. That's what T.I. wrote under that meme. <laughs> what would make T.I. write that? And then delete it. And then he, then he deleted the post. It gets deleted. We caught it though. Well, you, and we reported well, don't, it. Well, don't. Let, let's not forget let's not forget you know nick cannon too let's not forget that because i do remember mm -hmm. 
They was about to black. Yeah, I know we, we don't got to talk about it because, you know, that one you really can't talk about. But, hey, that came and went. Mm -hmm. And they was about to take his wild and out show and everything for what he said. They took it. We mean, trying to. They, yeah, yeah, they, they did take everything. it. They yeah, took they it. Take they it. took the show. They took the everything. They took him down to nothing. They, and, had that ball up, they had that ball up there like Shalom. Absolutely. And that was Mine. over. Mine. And that lasted <laughs> yeah. less than, I don't know, a couple of days. And that was the end of it. I was like Jesus. Yeah, so, you know. that every. They had that nigga reading every book and pamphlet <laughs> from the Jewish community. <laughs> Man, as they could, boy, that nigga was like. There are reports that you were pressured to <laughs> apologize in order to keep your job. Any truth to that? I can answer this wholeheartedly. Um, who pressured me? Ultimately, I've always said that apologies are, are empty for nick his road back meant more than apologies he sought atonement in hebrew they call it you know teshuva the the process of of not only you know repenting but through that if you're ever met with a, a similar situation that you make a different decision that goes beyond apologizing and i'm on this journey of atonement because it's the right thing to do. His journey began with the rabbis, welcoming them onto his podcast to learn from them. The first one to come on, the very rabbi who denounced him, Rabbi Cooper. I didn't know you, but the world knows you. Right, right. <laughs> when, when, I, when I watched the piece and uh, there was somebody there who was saying, uh, I'm not even a real Jew. Right. That, that goes right to the heart. I hurt people. I'm going to lean into it. I want to understand why I hurt you. Why? What? What did I say? What are these tropes? Educate me. Nick's quest for education isn't new. Last year, he finished undergrad at Howard University, and he's now pursuing a master's degree in divinity. Divinity and, and theology has been something that's been a part of my life. But I always tell people I sin way too much to be a preacher. So, one of those things that people paid attention to was you saying uh, to Professor Griff that. Black people can't be anti-Semitic because they are the Semitic people and black people are the true Hebrews. The purpose first was to say, we are all the same people. That, that's ultimately what I was saying. I was like, how can you hate when you believe that you come from the same people that are saying you're being hateful? Is that your belief that it is the birthright of black people? One thing that can't be debated is that we all originate from Africa. During the podcast, you actually went beyond the Jewish community and talked about non-melanated people. Right. Do you believe that non-melanated people are evil, savage, barbaric? Absolutely not. Then let's go. Let's let's go to what it really is. Then when we talk about the power of melanated people, when we talk mm -hmm. about who we really are as guys, and, and understanding right. that our melanin is so power and it connects us in a way that the reason why they fear black, the reason why they fear is because they the lack that they have of it. So then when you see what you know, Doctor uh, Francis C. Wellesley talked about is that fear in that 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 uh, just genetic that annihilation efficiency mm -hmm. when you have a person that has ha has the lack of pigment the right. lack of melanin right that they know that they will be annihilated so therefore however they got the power they 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 have the lack of compassion mm -hmm. that mel melanin comes with compassion L melanin comes with soul that mm -hmm. we call it we call it soul we soul brothers and sisters that's the melanin that connects us. Right. so the people that don't have it have are are a little and I'm, I'm gonna say this carefully <laughs> are a little less and 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 where the term actually comes from because i'm bringing it all the way back around okay. to, to minister farrakhan to where they may not have the compassion or the the when they were sent to the mountains of caucasus when they when they didn't have the power of the sun that was that the sun then started to deteriorate mm -hmm. them so then they're acting out of fear they're acting out of low self-esteem they're acting out of a, a deficiency mm -hmm. so therefore the only way that they can act is evil the only way they can they, they have to rob steal kill and fight or flight in, okay. or, in order to survive exactly so then these people who didn't have what we had and when i say we i speak of the mm -hmm. melanated people right they had to be savages they had to be barbaric. 
they had because they're in these nordic mountains they're in these rough uh torrential environments mm. so they they're acting as animals right so they're the ones that are actually closer to animals they're the ones that are actually the true savages and then they built up such this this i don't want to say warrior but they built up such this 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 conquering mm -hmm. uh barbaric mentality they took the show they took the, everything they took him down to nothing they and had that ball know, up they had that ball up there like shalom absolutely and that was Mine. Okay. and that lasted <laughs> less than i don't know a couple of days and that was the end of it I was like Jesus. They had, so, they had you know. that nigga reading every. They had that nigga reading every book and pamphlet <laughs> from the Jewish community, <laughs> man, as they could. Boy, that nigga was like, shit. And so it had to be something. So you know, obviously, we got to know that there's obviously, you know, obviously outside. some truth to what he was, and it was probably some truth to what he was saying. That's oh, why they, was, act, yeah, that's why more, they acted more so aggressively. It's, it's, yeah, it's way more than that. And if you haven't already, make sure you head over to nightdaymetmarket.com. And if you're looking for a great detox, make sure you go over there and purchase the Zeolite Natural uh, Detox Supplement. It definitely works, man. We've been selling this for like almost a whole year so far. And we constantly get repeated customers. Y'all can check the reviews out and see how it will work for you. I mean, it's helping people with a lot of illnesses. We ain't claiming we cure anything or... Because, you know, the FDA, they come knocking down your door, you run around claiming you care on healing things. But it's definitely helping a lot of people out. Y'all can, you know, it's pretty much a lot of studies out here on Zeolite. You can go to the uh, National Health uh, website, government website. They have done studies on Zeolite, you know, where they even cleaned up radioactive waste with Zeolite. I don't understand why they don't use this for uh, cleanup. You know, Detroit, Michigan, uh, I mean, not Detroit, Mich Flint, Michigan's water supplies. They could have been cleaned that up just using Zeolite. So make sure you head over there and get that. And if you haven't already, um, you know, you get we got 25% off on all CBD products, too. You know what I'm saying? Pre-rolls, CBD spokes, uh, cigars, the pain bomb, the pain uh, cream for you, the soaps and the lotions. Vapes and everything else. We also got apparel on here. We got the hoodies and everything on here. So make sure you head over to nightdaynetmarket.com and I'm up out of here. Peace.